Hi guys, in today's Wednesday episode of uh, Robin Studies Abroad, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. I'm gonna try out a day of mukbang. So you're joining me for lunch today. I just bought back a uh, takeout from Jaws, this little cafe eatery called Jaws and uh, they sell street food. And let's see what I got, okay? So I ordered tteokbokki, so which is a spicy rice cake a lot of you should be familiar with. First thing you think of when we mention street food, Korean street food, this is what you're gonna think about. Tteokbokki. So it comes packaged really, really nicely, like a bubble tea cap, you know, sealed nicely. And they have an extra packet of soy sauce, if that's what you like. And of course, uh, toothpicks, or I don't know what you call this. Long toothpicks. <laughs> also, in this separate bag, I bought Twigim, which is basically an assorted uh, fried stuff. Uh, to make you understand a little bit better, it's basically like Korean version of tempura. So there's a lot of different types of food they have. So they have squid, prawn, uh, ginmari, which is seaweed uh, rolled around like glass noodles. Everything is deep fried, so it's, everything is really unhealthy, but also smells great. Yep, so that's what I bought from Jaws. Let's get down to eating. Jaws were really nice. They are quite thoughtful. They provided this little sharp, shark fin kind of thing, but it's actually to cut the plastic packaging because it's quite difficult to rip it off. So let's open this top pocket packaging. Ah, I love it, I love it. Damn, I'm really making a mess, but come on, it's street food that I brought home. How neat can I expect it to be, right? Let me give you a closer look at the tteokbokki. So there are fish, uh, what am I talking about? There are, there's fish cake, which is uh, omuk or odeng. There is mandu, uh, which is basically fried dumplings. There is a quail's egg. And of course, the signature tteok, which is rice cake. So a lot of people have the misconception that tteokbokki means rice cake. No, tteokbokki is this particular dish, this particular style of rice cake cooked in this spicy sauce. But the actual rice cake is just called tteok. Alright, now comes the best part. Trying it out. Okay, I know this is a very spicy sauce. So <laughs> I'm gonna take it a little bit lighter now for the first bite at least. I had a really bad craving for this taste and Jaws Tteokbokki doesn't disappoint. It packs a punch, it's so delicious and the things in this box, so cool. Very rare do I see other places offering dumplings and quail's egg in a Tteokbokki. Fish cake maybe, yes, but dumplings and uh, quail's egg, no. Damn, this is so good. Really, really, really good stuff. I remember the first time eating this when I first came to Korea, like a month ago. This made me perspire so, so, so much. It was super tasty, super delicious, but super spicy. And now, I'm beginning to feel that this uh, is something I can handle better after a month here of eating spicy food. And hopefully my palate has been trained to be better adapted to eating the spice. Oh yeah! Now let's try some Twigim. Let's see what I'm gonna pick up. Mm, I'm just gonna use my hands. Forgive me if you're a hygiene freak, okay? Let's see what's this. I think this is a sweet potato or koguma. So deep fried sweet potato in their signature batter. Uh, one thing about Twigim though, usually when you buy Twigim from street stalls, they allow you to choose in uh, sets of five particular items that you want. But for today, to make it simpler for myself, I just told her one set and she just picked randomly five ingredients for me. So normally you gotta choose between a lot of different things like sweet potato, kimari as I mentioned earlier, uh, there is squid, there is shrimp or prawn, there's egg as well. I actually haven't had much twigim since I came here. Uh, this is actually the first time I'm buying it on my own. 
So I'm excited to try what the Korean style tempura actually tastes like. So I've heard good things about Twigim and this is gonna be my first bite. No sauce, no extra salt, just pure Jaws Twigim. Oh, do you hear that? So crunchy. Mmm. I'm glad that the taste of the sweet potato is not completely lost in the batter. Because what they do is that um, once you pick your different ingredients that you want, they will take them and re-deep fry them again and then cut them up to serve you. And that's what happened with this potato. And uh, it is delicious. The batter is really nice. It's not super oily. It is definitely oily, but it isn't overly greasy, which is great. And the crunch is good. Wow, it's nice, it's nice. I am thankful that the batter is not bland. It's pretty well seasoned. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay, now let's try the squid. I believe uh, squid is called o chingo in Korean. I'm not too sure about that. Don't fact check me. Fact check yourself. <laughs> okay, squid. Deep fried squid. Excellent. The squid taste is there. It's still chewy. And then the batter gives it a crunch. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. It is the Korean equivalent of your fried calamari rings. This is really good stuff. And uh, these two packets, Tokpoki and Twigim set, uh, totals uh, uh, 5,500 won. Okay, so Tokpoki goes for 3k at Jaws and the Twigim is 2.5k. Good stuff. Okay, so while we eat this kind of warm, hearty, oily street food, there are some drinks that would probably go really well with this on a cool day, especially now the weather, you know, it's kind of getting colder as we approach autumn. And one drink that I think a lot of Koreans would like to pair this stuff with is soju. And I have with me in my fridge already actually is a bottle of soju, plain original flavor. I, I really want to learn to like this because honestly, I haven't grown accustomed to this taste of soju yet. It's kind of like a Le it's kind of like a milder vodka and I'm not a big fan yet but I really want to learn to like drinking soju besides the fruit flavored one on a separate note right the grape flavored soju is delicious but uh, I really want to try this Chamisul Chamisul soju Chamisul is just the brand okay don't I don't think it means anything not that I know of not that I care but if I'm not wrong this is the brand endorsed by my favorite celebrity, IU. So, that is one reason why I really want to learn to like it. So, I don't like, as I said, right, I don't like the flavor of soju plain. So, I am gonna mix it with that blue can you see sitting at the corner. <laughs> it is a can of Korean beer. And my favorite brand for Korean beer is Kes. Okay, you gotta get the original cast. Don't get the cast light because Korean beer is already so light. You get the cast light, it's just gonna taste like bitter water. It's horrible. So just get this cast fresh. It works and it's safe option. And if I'm not wrong, it's endorsed by Big Bang's top or T.O.P. Ah, it's gotta be good, right? Don't get the height. I mean, you can get height beer, but that's Oh, that's endorsed by like Song Joong Ki, who is everywhere at the moment, and uh, I'm not sure about credibility there. No, he's just doing it for the money, right? He should be. <laughs> that's just a jealous me speaking. <laughs> I want to be as successful as Song Joong Ki at least, right? Okay, so mix, uh, mix to taste basically. However much uh, soju you want, however much beer you want, usually it's one to one. But I really like a little bit less soju. Soju is just there to give it a bit of more, to make the beer a little bit smoother. I, I don't know how to describe it, but it's not bad. It, they kind of work together. Yep. Hear the fizz effervescence. 
kind of looks like tea, yeah, but no chance. Oh, I can feel it now, like why it pairs so well with these foods. Ah, it's like the beer and soju combination gives a refreshing kick. Especially it's cold, man. it has to be cold drinks. So, okay, so refreshing, plus this spice, and then the oil. It's just, it's simple decadence, really. It's a great meal, not too expensive. And uh, it fills you up for a pretty long time, I must say. Mm. Okay guys, I switched to using the long toothpicks to grab my twigim because I didn't want my fingers to get oily again. So this is Kimari. Seaweed wrapped around rice or glass noodles rather. Yeah, well, let me try to get it in focus. Hmm. Come on camera, do your magic. And there it is. Kimari, seaweed, rice, I mean glass noodles, seaweed, glass noodles, and delicious batter, deep fried Kimari. Let's just eat it. Oh, this actually tastes pretty good. I'm liking it more than I thought I would. Because the last time I had Kimari, it was horrible. But this, this is so tasty. Damn, this is really good. Now I can understand why Koreans like Kimari. Because when I had my first ever one at some random shop, that was horrible. I had no idea why they bothered making it. It felt like leftovers thrown together and deep fried just to, you know, avoid wastage. But this, this is pretty delicious. Now let me show you more of the Twig Game. Right, so I've shown you sweet potato goguma, I've shown you squid ojingo, and I've showed you the seaweed glass noodles wrap thing, uh, kimari. So now let's see what is this different peculiar looking shape one. Ta -da! I believe this is the mandu, but from looking what's inside, it kind of looks like the glass noodles as well, it kind of looks the same filling as the kimari. So, my hopes are not too high up for this, and lucky I did not order extra. Um. Oh. It tastes slightly different from kimari. A little bit more peppery taste. And I like the crispy nature of the mandu skin. Mmm. Nice. But. I may not get the mandu thing again. I prefer the kimari. Mm. Yeah, after eating, I actually prefer the kimari over the mandu skin now. The more I eat it, yeah. Yeah, like I don't know why that. To me, dumplings or mandu should be either filled with chives, should be with pork. Yeah, chives, pork, that's it. That's the perfect like Chinese mandu. That's the way it should be done. Okay, what else is inside? I think, yeah, I think that's all the variety she packed for me. Let me see what's this though. Did she? Hmm. Aha, I think this is the last item. So let's see, uh, we're supposed to have five. So I've gone through squid, ochingo, uh, kimari, goguma, and the just now I just had the mandu. And okay, this is the fifth item, correct. This looks like pumpkin, orange, and uh, yeah, looks exactly the same as sweet potato, kinda, but just orange. And I'm personally not a big fan of pumpkin, so I don't know how this will go, but yeah, whatever, right? I mean, I paid for it, so I'm gonna finish all this. Uh, I don't know what pumpkin is really, really supposed to taste like, but this feels pretty bland. I'm just tasting the batter and a lot of mushiness as what you expect from a pumpkin. It just crumbles in your mouth, kind of dissolves a little bit. It's a very pleasant texture, I guess, but yeah, it's this still doesn't win me over in terms of liking pumpkins. So yeah, my favorite 
quick game for today is still the Squid, Watching All, Goguma, then the Kim Mari. Surprising top three, yeah? Next time, I'm definitely gonna try the Shrimp. So now, back to the Top Poki. Mmm, there's something beautiful about Top. Mm. Chewy. Yum, yum, yum. Okay. Let me show you guys the fish cake. Odeng or Omuk. Apparently, Omuk is what Koreans call fish cake. But the Japanese call them Odeng. So basically, they can be used interchangeably. The store owners will know what you mean. Alright, this is the fish cake. Korean fish cake. Omuk. Ah, oh, yes. There's something about the Korean fish cakes. I have no idea what, but it's so, so tasty. Right? Now, normally in Singapore, I would never buy fish cake because it's like, to me, a waste of money. But here, fish cake is just so awesome. You can buy the original Odeng or Omo with the soup, and that is going to be delicious as well. And then when you put it with this sauce, this special tteokbokki sauce, it's really like next level fish cake right there. Okay, so now let's... I have no idea what to do with this exactly really, but I'm just going to open it and just pour it into my tteokbokki. And let's hope for the best in this lunch, right? After all, this is an experimental episode. Let's have an experimental lunch. Oh, it's everywhere. Okay, 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 okay. I'm pouring about half the packet of soy sauce. And I'm calling it for the soy sauce. I don't really want it to be too salty because I think it's delicious as it is. So as the sauce mix, let's have another top. Rice cake! Oh! The soy sauce hits me instantly. It's nice, it's tasty, but not at, not exactly necessary, so it might help to cut the spice a little bit, the soy sauce, but I love the original spicy sauce that they have at Jaws. So to me, I wouldn't add the soy sauce again, and luckily today I only added half the packet. Well, in case you don't know what a quail's egg looks like, it's just a smaller egg. This is it, and I'm gonna enjoy it anyway. Mmm, I'm not sure if it's different from normal eggs, but quail's eggs, egg yolk, feels much creamier. Or, I'm just fanboying over this dish right here. I don't know, man. You guys be the judge. Oh, yes. Alright, this is the last piece of item that I have yet to show you. I can't really poke it well because it's quite crispy. I'm gonna just try and chopstick this. Ta-da! This is the mandu that I told you guys about. They cut one up in half, I think, and they put one in the tteokbokki. This is mandu, smothered in the spicy sauce. I'm gonna take a bite. Oh! So crispy! Even after being smothered with sauce, it's so crispy! It's like, I don't even know if there's any filling. Maybe not. It's just like fried better in that shape. Mmm! Gives it a different texture in this dish because everything here is chewy, soft and chewy. Then there's one one thing that's crispy inside. It's a really cute balance. Tteokbokki, brilliant dish. Probably one of my favorite, you know, Korean street food out there, at least for now. <sighs> okay, so I've shown you everything that I have to eat for lunch. I'm gonna join you guys again for dessert. Okay, I'm done with lunch and all that's left is dessert! And for dessert, I bought from a convenience store ice cream! This is uh, one very nice ice cream. Melon flavoured or rock melon flavoured, whatever you like to call it. Yeah, it's just an ice cream on a stick. <clears throat> I've had this once before and I really love it. It's just, it, it tastes like exactly what you expect of the fruit. It's super delicious. It's nice to eat. Yeah, this is it. It's just a green cuboid. No, it's just a green ice cream. Mmm. Ah. 
so nice. It's just like a creamy melon. It's beautiful. This ice cream is great. This is perfect for eating after the tteokbokki because it got really, really spicy at the end. <laughs> I could feel my mouth burning. Uh, but I survived and now it's time to enjoy the fruits of my labor, which is ice cream. Oh, and this ice cream, it only costs 1,000 won. Okay guys, so that is my lunch for today. I'm not quite sure what's the draw in watching people eat, but somehow it is really quite fascinating. I myself like to watch this guy called Matt Stoney. He's a competitive eater and he his videos are just awesome to watch, to see him conquer such massive, huge ass feats of uh, eating. It's just incredible. So. I'm not so sure about what's the draw in mukbang, watching uh, someone eat an entire meal which is usually quite a large spread over like half an hour. I don't know what makes people watch or what makes people want to pay these guys to eat. Um, let me know what you guys think of this video though because today is really not really eventful and I decided to just try this out because one friend told me like no if you're gonna eat alone why not just try a mukbang kind of thing and see what happens so that was my version of a little mukbang if you like it let me know in the comment section down below please like comment subscribe and share this video if you enjoyed it especially and hopefully you guys are a little bit hungry now after watching me eat so Enjoy! I'll see you guys in the next video tomorrow! Peace!